Archaeologists are baffled by an unusual skeleton that was unearthed while excavating an ancient church at a future high-speed rail site. In Russia, archaeologists have unearthed a coffin with a dangerous dead. And in England, historians made an African athlete out of an ancient slave. Watch the video until the end, it will be interesting. Hi friend, you're on the Kurtop channel. Unusual skeleton under the ancient church Archaeologists working at St. Mary's Church in Stoke Mandeville could not have imagined the treasure trove of artifacts that would greet them when they first set to work on the site. Archaeological excavations first began here four years ago, in preparation for the construction of the HS2 high-speed railway. The process involved moving the remains of about 3,000 people buried in the local cemetery. Archaeologists led by Dr. Rachel Wood announced the discovery of the remains at the site of the church. They found a square foundation trench surrounded by a circular ditch that contained burials, three remarkable life-size Roman busts, and a number of other artifacts. Among the finds analyzed were a bizarre skeleton, busts, cremation urns, and a very well-preserved glass jar. The skeleton was found headless in a circular ditch. Professor Alice Roberts, host of Dig for Britain, says the extraordinary skeleton had leg injuries that suggest a sudden violent end. She claims that the find exceeds the wildest expectations of archaeologists. The body was found next to several funerary urns thrown into a ditch and broken into pieces. Guy Hunt, another archaeologist who worked at the site, says, there are eight of them. We also have burials. This burial is really interesting because this is not the same person who was buried in the classical way. It's someone who's more or less thrown into the ditch. They were buried along with the coins, and the coins are really very important here. The coins can be dated, giving archaeologists a much better idea of what era various items were left in the moat. Ancient Egyptian Pyramid in Kazakhstan this structure, similar to the pyramids of ancient Egypt, was discovered by archaeologists in the Kazakh steppe. The mausoleum was built over 3,000 years ago. The discovery was made by members of the expedition of the Seryarka Archaeological Institute, led by candidate of historical sciences Igor Kakushkin. In the late Bronze Age, 15th 10th century BC, people lived on the territory of Kazakhstan, leaving behind the Begazidende Bay culture. It is characterized by high, round, rectangular mausoleums of the nobility built of rock stones. The burial tradition prescribed to lay the deceased on its side, with arms and legs bent, and weapons, jewelry, and ceramics were buried nearby. One of the flourishing places of the Begazidende Bay of culture was the area near the village of Seriarka, not far from Karaganda. Archaeological research has been carried out here since the middle of the last century. Recently, scientific work has brought a new sensation. Archaeologists have unearthed a unique stabbed mausoleum. With its forms, this majestic funerary structure resembles the famous Egyptian pyramids of about the same historical period, and especially the stabbed pyramid of Pharaoh Joseph. Here it is in the photo. By the way, archaeologists reconstructed the appearance of the pyramid in Kazakhstan. Here's what it looked like before the renovation. And here is a view after. Scientists believe that the mausoleum was erected in Seriarka more than 3,000 years ago for the local pharaoh, the leader or kagan of a powerful local tribe of the late Bronze Age. Bronze Military Diploma during excavations in the ancient city of Peret, located in southeastern Turkish province of Adi Yemen, archaeologists discovered a bronze military diploma made 1,898 years ago. Such a document was issued to a soldier after 20 years of service in the army. It meant that its owner becomes a full Roman citizen and can marry. Excavations in this area began in 2001. The task of archaeologists was to find the ancient city of Pur, one of the five largest cities in the local region. Every year in this area, scientists made various discoveries. In the current season, they managed to find a Roman fountain that remains of city water, conduits, and various buildings, and a military diploma on a bronze plate. Director of the Adi Yaman Museum, Mahmoud Alkan, said that the text on the diploma, stating that the soldier after two decades of service received the status of a citizen and can marry, was only translated with the help of an expert in ancient history and languages, Professor Mustafa. Hamdi Sayer. He also noted that in total about 100,000 such diplomas were made. Archaeologists managed to find 800 of them. 
rare treasures in Poland. During archaeological excavations on an isle near Ostrovite, Pomerania, a thousand-year-old burial richly decorated with grave goods was discovered. These items, some extremely rare, are believed to have belonged to a wealthy member of the Pomeranian elite. Two amber rings, a bronze bowl, an iron knife in a leather sheath, and bronze buckles were found in the grave of a Pomeranian nobility who lived between the 11th and 12th centuries. The head of the excavation, Dr. Jersey Sikora from the University of Lodz, noted that these two almost identical rings were symmetrically located in relation to the axis of the body. The first ring was found where the bones of the right hand should have been. The second ring was on the finger of the left hand on the other side of the body. Amber rings are extremely rare grave goods, and finding two in one grave is a unique phenomenon. The discovered burial is called elite because it differs from the nearby ones in its size and expensive items with which it was furnished. Measuring 3 meters long and 1.5 and meters wide, this grave is larger than the average bronze graves in the area, which also suggests that it is an elite grave. Although the material from which it was built has not been preserved, the shape and size indicate that it was a wooden chamber grave built like a large chest. Chamber graves are found in ancient cultures around the world, and when used for individual burial, the deceased is considered to have a higher status than an ordinary grave. Archaeologists believe that this man was a Christian because he was buried and not burned. The east-west orientation of the body also indicates a Christian burial. A city that existed 200,000 years ago In South Africa, about 150 kilometers west of the port Maputa, Mozambique, a giant stone city has been discovered. The age was determined by measuring the erosion rate of the dolerite. The metropolis of 1,500 square kilometers was built between 160,000 and 200,000 years ago. The ruins are made up of huge stone circles, most of which are buried in the sand and are only visible from the air or satellite imagery. This ancient city is considered to be part of a 10,000 square kilometer system of cities and towns. The developed network of roads connecting it with terraced agriculture suggests that this metropolis was home to a very advanced civilization. The geology of this place is also quite interesting due to the numerous gold mines located in the area. According to researchers, this ancient civilization could be engaged in gold mining. Although the locals knew about these stone remains, no one had previously questioned their origin and the age of these stone circles, although they were always in plain sight. As often happens, in 2007, non-professional enthusiast Michael Tellinger, a researcher and writer passionate about the study of human origins, and Johann Heine, a local firefighter and pilot, decided to explore this place. That is, professional historical science arrogantly brushed aside the worthless, in its opinion, ruins that were not worth attention, as, however, it still does to this day. The results of the researchers inspired Michael Tellinger, the writer of the alternative to write the book Temples of African Gods. According to Tellinger, the evidence found suggests a completely different view of human history. History. According to the generally accepted version of human history, the first civilization on Earth was the Sumerian, which arose in southern Mesopotamia about 6,000 years ago. But what if there was another, earlier civilization lost in the midst of time? The photographs, artifacts and evidence we have collected point to a vanished civilization that never existed and that predates all others, not by a few hundred years or a few thousand years, but by many thousands of years. Tellinger believes this ancient African metropolis is the oldest human-built structure known today. He believes that it was from this civilization that the Sumerians and Egyptians inherited knowledge. This hypothesis is based on the fact that images of the Egyptian Ankh, Key of Life, were found on the rocks of the ancient city. How could there be an image of an Egyptian god thousands of years before the rise of Egyptian civilization? These discoveries are so stunning that they will not be taken lightly by the mainstream historical and archaeological community, as we have seen. This will require a complete paradigm shift in human history. Tellinger's findings raise more questions than answers, but we can hope that this incredible ancient city will attract more researchers in the future and that one day more light will be shed on this lost civilization and the unknown aspects of human history in general. Coughing with Dangerous Dead Yakut archaeologists discovered the remains of a man who was buried in a birch bark coughing. 
features of the burial indicate that the deceased was a dangerous person. Today we will learn some aspects of the burials in the past centuries among the Yakuts and take a closer look at this unusual find of archaeologists. Archaeologists examined a coffin with bones discovered in 2018 on the left bank of the Lina River in the vicinity of Yakutsk. Archaeologists noted that until the second half of the 16th century, these lands were occupied by the Kori clans, whom the Yakuts considered to be foreigners. The northern people had different ways and types of burials, which were associated with ideas about the afterlife. In traditional cultures, four types of burials were common – inhumation and cremation, as well as ground and air burials. The burials of the Yakuts were mainly made in the ground, but often the deceased was left in a yurt, which was then set on fire. The deceased was about 40 years old. His height was approximately 170 centimeters. The skeleton was covered with the remains of cloth made of leather and fur and was in a birch bark coffin, lying on a birch bark mat with a birch bark cloth on top. Radiocarbon analysis of the bones showed that the man died around 1480-1640 AD. The burial was accompanied by inventory, a large blue bead, fragments of a wooden bowl and a black glass bead. Scientists also suggest that the belt of the deceased was a bag with a button, a wooden spoon and medicinal plants. Several factors make the burial unusual – the prone position of the body, the orientation to the northeast and not to the west, and the absence of weapons or craft. According to researchers, all this indicates that the deceased belonged to the dangerous dead, such were considered suicides, some shamans, outcasts, as well as physically or mentally handicapped people. Ancient Roman figurine of a fighter Scientists have found that a lead figurine of a wrestler or slave of the 1st century AD, discovered in the 1920s in an ancient Roman necropolis, depicted an African warrior. The researchers found that the man originally had a spear in his hand, and he acquired a sitting position due to the heating of soft metal during the funeral rite. Presumably, the figurine was made in the Mediterranean region. The depiction of Africans in works of art, such as sculpture, has been a popular motif since the 6th century BC. This tradition continued into the Roman period, aided by increased contact between the Romans and the sub-Saharan population. Africans were often depicted as athletes, warriors, or servants. In the course of the Roman conquest of Britain, similar objects also penetrated this region. Over the years of excavation, scientists have discovered five figurines of the Roman period depicting Africans. Scientists from the charity English Heritage, led by Cameron Moffat, have re-examined a lead figurine found in the 1920s at the site of an ancient Roman necropolis near the settlement of Lyracetum. The artifact, about 55 mm high, was dated to the 1st century AD. The depicted men wore bracelets and a necklace of large beads. Apparently, the item was grave goods accompanying the cremated remains of a buried person. Initially, the figurine was thought to represent an enslaved man, whose facial expression was interpreted as suffering. In the 1990s, this judgment was revised in favor of a wrestler sitting on the ground with his legs folded. However, in the course of the new work, the researchers found that in the right hand of the figurine, there was a previously unnoticed hole, which apparently was a bronze spear. In addition, the figurine initially stood upright, and the depicted person acquired a sitting position only later due to the fact that the soft metal was heated. The image of an African man carrying a spear is quite common in the art of the classical period, usually denoted as an African warrior. Although almost nothing is known about the owner of this item, the researchers suggested that he could see something related to himself in this figurine, so the figurine accompanies the buried even after death. Perhaps in 20-30 years, this figure will be interpreted differently. Even in such small things, we can see how historians change their minds over the years. Homo sapiens is 232,000 years old. Archaeologists have refined the dating of the Omo 1 fossils, which are considered by some scientists to be the oldest known remains of Homo sapiens. It turned out that the minimum age of these finds is about 232 plus minus 22,000 years, that is, much older than previously thought. In addition, scientists have clarified the dating of fossils from the Herti locality. They date back to about 160 155,000 years ago. In paleoanthropology, there is no unity regarding which fossils should be considered the remains of the most ancient Homo sapiens. 
One common tradition is the remains of individuals Oma 1 and Oma 2, which were discovered in 1967 by Richard Leakey in southern Ethiopia near the Oma River. Radiometric analysis has shown that the age of these finds is about 200,000 years. Studies of two skulls and a postcranial skeleton allowed scientists to name these individuals as humans of modern anatomical type. However, they still had some archaic features that brought them closer to Neanderthals. Ethiopia is rich in Middle Pleistocene hominine fossils, so one of them is the village of Herto, where archaeologists discovered the remains of 10 individuals, including two skulls of adults and one child. Paleoanthropological research has shown that these people belong to the subspecies Homo sapiens I dealt to. For radiometric organ dating, the scientists took 113 samples of cenidine. As a result of the study, they found that the volcanic eruption due to which these minerals appeared occurred 233 plus minus 22,000 years ago. New data on the time of the eruption of the Shala volcano and information of the composition of the foreign minerals allows us to refine the dating of other Ethiopian sites. So the remains from the Herto locality turn out to be really much younger than Elmo 1. According to scientists, these fossils belong to approximately 160 155,000 years ago. However, not only the remains of Oma 1 are considered the oldest Homo sapiens, one of the other candidates is an individual from the Moroccan Paleolithic site of Jebel Erhad, who lived about 315,000 years ago. While historians are rewriting our history, you can watch the videos on the channel forever. Leave your kind comments under this video and I will definitely answer them. Thanks for your views. Bye everyone!